Let's get this show started. First and foremost, we'd like to call on Mr. Dax Cordero and his wife, Shay Cordero. Dax, Coach Dax, and uh, Coach Shay, if I can call you so. Um, they are from the Arnis Club of the Philippines. Basically, you can call it Arnis Club, but it's actually a federation already. If we can get one more microphone over here for uh, Dax. And one thing about Arnis, Dax, uh, tell us something. You know, Arnis, usually people say that Arnis is uh, all sticks, diba? Puro palo palo lang. Um, actually, that's the uh, the misconception. No? Okay. Uh, most people think that it's all about sticks, but uh, in actuality, uh, um, Arnis is actually more dangerous no, than that. The Arnis actually originated, uh, I'm sorry, the stick originated as a training tool. Okay. Uh, it actually represents. Uh, knives, uh, sharp edge weapons, mga bolo, no? Uh, so... So parang step one lang yung sticks. Yes, but in its own right, after so many years of using it, it has evolved into a weapon in itself. Okay. Uh, a bit more, uh, well, less lethal, uh, but yun na nga, it's, it's, it's the one thing that people don't know about Arnis. People just think that it's all sticks, but it's it's actually more than that. And that's, that's what we want to show today. You know, we always say that Arnis is, you know, we're proud to be Filipinos because of Arnis. Um, it is a sport that started here or a discipline. And uh, how old is Arnis? Well, it, uh, nobody really knows because it, uh, it predates the Spanish times. No? Uh, in fact, if you recall your history, uh, si Lapulabu was the one who, uh, who slayed uh, mm -hmm. Magellan with a, with a sword. No? Yes. So actually over the years, no, itong, itong uh, sword techniques natin evolved, uh, getting influences from, uh, from Malaysia, from Indonesia, yung mga silat, uh, as well as uh, Spanish, some Spanish influences also. Kasi because uh, when, uh, when the Span Spaniards came, they hired mercenaries. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they, tra they trained these Filipino mercenaries in the art of fencing. And the Filipinos, they adapted the, uh, the techniques into their own uh, indigenous uh, weapons. No? So, yung mga itak, yung mga machete, no? uh, And they created, well, we created our own uh, very unique art. So, you think evolution of the Arnis? Yes. So, today, tell us how, what you're going to show everybody here, you know, the basics of Arnis. Yeah, well, actually, uh, what I aim to show today, no? uh, we're going to do away with the, uh, with the regular, because everybody knows the, uh, the, the, the version of Arnis wedding. You know, you see the twirling of the sticks. Yung nakikita natin sa movie. Nakikita natin sa scene, you know, nakikita natin sa mga park where all the, uh, you know, where, where the old men, they, they do their, uh, their, 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 you know, their routines. Mm -hmm. It looks very graceful, very nice, no? But actually, uh, if you approach that old man in the park, you know that he's a, he has a secret, no? Actually, what he's doing is not a dance, it's actually more lethal, no? Okay. So, that's what we want to show. We want to show our niece as a legitimate uh, self-defense option, no? Kasi, it's, it's, a, it's a Filipino, it's, it's our very own, and yet, uh, it seems to be not as popular as the, uh, you know, the foreign arts, like what we have now, like uh, Jiu-Jitsu, yes. and Muay Thai. A lot of it, um, yung mga MMA, yes, UFC, so, uh, a lot of it, the uh, hand-to-hand combat. Yes, now, uh, we're going to stress now why yung Filipino art na sa atin, and it should be cherished and it should be uh, again valued as a martial art a legitimate self-defense option. You were telling me earlier on na uh, meron mga pumunta dito at nagulat that a lot of Filipinos are actually not aware of our niece. That's true. Actually, I was invited by your network si, uh, when uh, Wonder Boy came si Stephen Thompson. Yes. Uh, and the first thing that he asked for was he wanted training in Cali. Okay. And the funny thing was nobody Knew, knew where to find the coach, no? And and he was so, parang he was so surprised that uh, you know we weren't familiar with it. And then somehow uh, people got to reach our team, no? mm -hmm. and we taught him. And he was he was actually telling me, na parang, wow, you know, we always thought that all Filipinos do this martial art, and yet hindi pala. <laughs> so ngayon, uh, our niece is more properly known as Eskrima and Cali. You yes. mentioned Cali. Like, what Cali. is the difference between Eskrima and Cali? Well, the difference between uh, Arnis, Cali, and Eskrima is nothing. Okay. They're all the same. Mas pagkita lang pakinggan? Pagkita lang pakinggan. Internationally, it's more famous uh, as Cali. 
Uh, I don't know why, pero alam ko, it, it's the older name of our names actually. Uh, pero kari kang yun nga, mas paganda pakinggan, and the, uh, the foreigners, they seem to like it. No? So, and, and now, there's always this thought na our names is the stick, uh, Kali is the knife, mm. and then Iskrima is the sword. Uh, actually, they're all the same. All the same. Names, and that's what we're gonna try to show today. And one thing also, naalala ko nung uh, balikatan exercises a few yeah. years ago, the Americans actually asked the Filipinos to teach them yes. uh, sword fighting because it's a it's a it is an art it is self defense. Pero mo kung uh, hindi na nagagamit ng mga more well, I, I guess uh, more modern soldiers. That's true. Actually, uh, jungle warfare, no, uh, part of the equipment of the military is uh, yung machete, no, uh, machete sa, sa America, no. So, but uh, dito sa atin, we actually have a we have a full uh, arsenal of techniques that can make the machete uh, more deadly no, to, to an experienced arnisador no, than to a regular person. No? Rather than hacking away, there are techniques that can be applied to that. And that's what they like. No? That's what's uh, popular about it. And it's not that just limited to that. Pati yung knife fighting. Mm -hmm. no? uh, dito nang galing sa Pilipinas, dito tayo. We have the most complete system of, uh, of knife fighting here in the Philippines. It's all our own. No? Ang nangyayari kasi paminsan sa Pilipino, we always try to look outside. Ano ba yung magbibigay ng mga nasa labas? But actually, there's so many things that the Philippines, the Filipino can be proud of from within. That's true. Right? One, of the, one, of, one of those is our niece. That's right. So, That's Coach, right. siguro, simulan na natin okay. yung demo natin. Okay, sige. Uh, if you can talk us through, ano yung papakita muna natin? Sige, well, actually, uh, we're gonna show, uh, well, Shay and I are going to show uh, basic techniques, no? And then we will start with the stick, which everyone is familiar with, no? And then we will show how it applies to different weapons, no? So this is actually going to be repetitive, but it's going to illustrate what exactly we mean, uh, what, we exa uh, what it is exactly we mean when we say that uh, the stick actually translates to a bladed weapon. No? So yeah, and then in the end, we're going to show also some applications as to how we can use our knees uh, as a legitimate uh, martial art uh, to protect ourselves in certain street situations. And also in mga home invasion, mga ganyan, oh. no? so that at least people will appreciate the value of of our niece as a martial art. Yeah, first and foremost, self-defense. Yes, 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 yes. Because people say it's just an art. They think that it's a dance, but actually it's not. Yeah, tsaka ang iniisip ng ibang tao, kung meron ka ng weapon, okay ka na, you're safe. But actually, the best thing is to understand the value of the weapon. Because if you have a weapon and you don't know how to use it, you end up hurting yourself and those around you. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So yun na nga, actually, when we have certain tools here, may mga uh, meron kami, we have like these, these bladed weapons. Okay. I just want everyone to know this, these, these are all fake. Okay. These are all blunted, no? So there's no danger of anyone getting cut, no? Uh, because these are practice uh, tools, no? So, so kung mga naka-gloves? Meron tayo <laughs> gloves kasi mga kaya, pupok pa kayo na mag-shake, no? But uh, that's going to, uh, that's that's later on. But yes, uh, these these are all tools that we're meant to be safe uh, for practice. Okay. Sige, Coach. Sige, right, so let's start it. Okay, let's start so the demo of our knees. And coach will actually be explaining to us before they, they, they do it. So coach, if you guys can uh, step over here so that everybody can see. Okay, so let's start though. First of all, I'd like to illustrate the difference uh, between a, an arm, uh, you know, uh, arm combat and uh, free hand combat. No? So uh, just to say, no, I am I'm right handed. No? When you fight, or uh, free hand, or empty hand, like for example if you're boxing, uh, my, my strong hand is in the back, alright? So that I can generate more power. Okay. Now, my front, my front hand no, is, is there to jab, right? jab, and also to parry, okay? But when you're dealing with weapons, it's the opposite. So I'm right-handed, she is left-handed, and if you notice, no, when we grip our weapons, it's the opposite, the strong arm or the weapon hand is in front, no? as opposed to your free hand. Level, no? No? So the, the, the front, uh, sorry, the weapon is in front. Now why is this? No? That's because this is both your weapon and also your shield. No? Kumbaga, this will provide your attack and also your defense. No? So this is meant to, 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 to attack 
no? And also to protect the rest of your body, no? From your attacker, no? And this is what we're gonna show. So we're gonna show you basic techniques, no? and then we will we will proceed to the other weapons, no? Uh, and show you how this all applies to to the stick techniques, right? Okay, so, thank you, coach. Okay, so we'll start with the basic strikes. No? So uh, now uh, the first basic strike that we have is a diagonal strike. So imagine that there's a clock in front of you. Okay? So there's a there's the numbers. Okay. So the first strike that we're going to do is start with your strong shoulder. You rest your uh, your weapon there, and then the first strike goes like this. No? You hit it downward. Okay. First you're gonna hit a one o'clock on the clock, okay? The clock face, no? So there's a clock in front of you. One o'clock. First first strike is one o'clock. She's left-handed, so she's gonna strike at eleven o'clock. So eleven o'clock if you're left-handed and right foot forward if this is your if this is your strong hand. Yes. So you're gonna go down and hit the eleven o'clock and then I'm sorry, the one o'clock. One o'clock to seven o'clock. One o'clock to seven o'clock. And then you're gonna rest it on the opposite side. And then rest it on the opposite so shoulder. That's, that's the first strike. The second strike is you come from this opposite shoulder and you hit the 11 o'clock and then you go down to the 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock and then, and then you rest. You rest your uh, your weapon on, on the strong uh, strong shoulder. So that's the second strike. The third strike, okay, is you start again from the from the strong shoulder, okay, and then you strike downward, strike downward, and it's a circular a circular strike which ends on the same shoulder okay so just to show you no, in slow motion these are the three strikes that I, I, I was describing no? so you want okay, two and then three so simple enough huh? one two and three one two three okay one more time one two and then three now uh, we put some more power no, into it because we have a uh, we have a yanto. No? This is a typical artist uh, tool no? or, or weapon. This is a blunted weapon, so what we're going for is blunt trauma. So you want to strike this as, as as hard as you can, no? using your full body. All right. So we're going to do the same strikes, but with full power. Okay. All right. So we'll do number one, number two, number three, number one. Three. Okay, one more time, number one, number two, and number three. Okay, so these are obviously offensive, uh, these are obviously offensive techniques, no? So I'm going to show you now, Shay and I, we are going to do uh, some distance sparring. I'm going to be targeting her, don't worry, she's going to be safe, she's going to be from a safe distance. And just for everybody to know, Shay is the wife. Yes, that's why we're doing this, because this is the only second time. Okay, I'm going to go to the house. So we're going to go to the So anyway. So these strikes actually are very flexible. No? Uh, don't think that just because you're doing this, you just you just have three or you know four targets. No? You can actually go uh, multi-level with these techniques. No? So what do I mean with that? No? So with this with this with these techniques, I can go high. Okay. Go high. Okay. Shoulders. Okay. Shoulders. I can go medium, I can go middle, alright? So torso, I can go the arms, the elbows, the hands, or I can go low. Hit the knees, the thighs, the elbow. So, yeah. so the first strike coach is all upper, above the shoulder. Yes, you do above the shoulder, alright? Above the shoulder, and then you can do below the shoulder, alright? And then you can go under under the, the waist. No? Uh, now uh, it just shows the, the flexibility of these techniques. It, it seems that they're very simplistic, but actually, uh, because of all the targets that you have, no, you can go multi-level. No? Now, obviously, uh, what I'm showing you is the offense. No? But I was talking to you earlier about how this is also meant to be not just your sword but also your shield. No? So what does that mean? Okay. So for example, she is going to attack me. So Kanina is attacking her. So now she is going to attack me. So she slashes me here. I can use my sword to defend and then help her. So it's, it's the same strike that I did to strike her, but now I use it for defense. So I'm here, okay, I'm here now, and then she's going to strike me here. She can use the same strike to defend. Okay? Now she's going to stab me here. Okay? And then again, she's going to stab me here. Again, no? So, 
It's the same. It's the same strikes that I did for offense, and I'm also using it for defense. So just strike it here. Strike it again. Strike it down. Strike it down again. So yeah. So it's the same. All right. Now, if you put so you, these are the basic techniques. Coach, may wear one rinsa. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so these are the basic techniques. No? Now, just like boxing, no? boxing is very simple. No? You, have the, you have the jab, you have the uppercut, no? you have the straight, the hook. It's all the same, but it's just in different combinations. And it's in, in earnest, it's the same. You have these basic strikes, and then you just chain them all together to create your own uh, technique to overwhelm and to uh, confuse your enemy. No? And then uh, parang execute different modes of attack. No? So, just to give you an example. Okay? So, we have this, okay? we have this. But if you chain them all together, Coach, that's one stick, pala, huh? This is one just stick. one stick for this everybody is, that's watching. This is it's, one stick. It's right? just one stick. Now, what you can do with one stick? You can do with what you can do with the right hand. You can also do with the left. Okay. So if you're doing this, okay, you can also do this. Okay. So you the yung uh, application ng dalawa. So I'm gonna show again the shade. So again, I can go offense, just offense with two sticks. Let me go high. Go below, arms, hands, right below, knees, chin. Okay, now again, if you, I don't know, so we're going to do defense. And also, uh, with offense, now it's defense, no? These are the defensive applications again. So you need to the head, stay in hand, you need to be here, you need to be here, you need to be here, so yeah, again. You combine all the techniques, and then you end up with a more fluid, more confusing plan of attack. So, kung baga, mas malili ko yung kalaban mo. Coach, it also seems like you're lulling your opponent to sleep with, uh, yes. <laughs> with, with your strikes and both having your right and your left hand. Actually, that's true, because uh, you can actually fake with your left, no? Fake like you're striking. And then you go low. So para gano, it's like you're hitting him in the head, but then you go low. No? And then you follow it up. You have so many options when you do two handed. And also, when you mentioned that there's the upper part, the middle, and the lower part, depending on what kind of damage you want to inflict Correct. on the one that's, uh, I guess, on the offense towards you, you can also temper it, yes. so to speak. Normally, when we uh, we want to be less lethal about it, we uh, we aim for the hands, we aim for the knees. No? Just to, uh, to be able to stop your opponent uh, in his tracks, no? So we tend to avoid the head, no? And the more lethal uh, techniques. And also, if, if your opponent is taller or smaller... That's right, that's right. Because you're going to be reaching when he's taller. And also, in a, with a taller point uh, of opponent, like you, for example, no? Obviously, okay... This was not part of the deal, but okay. All right. Okay, obviously you have a bigger, you have a longer reach than me, okay? So if I try to reach you in the head, Mas mo ako, di ba? So, my option would be, I'm gonna hit you in the hand. Because that way, ikaw, you're, ha you're targeting my head. No? Right, you're targeting my head. Upset ako sa kamay. So, siya hindi siya haabot, ako haabot. So that's how you counteract it. And that's how a weapon is an advantage uh, to you if you have it. No? So yeah, anyway. Thank you so much. Thank you for being nice to me, Coach. Okay, so we've, we've done the, the individual strikes with the sticks. So now, this is what I spoke about. No? Uh, so you have the sticks, okay? Now, what you can do with the stick again, you can do with a bladed weapon. So let's just imagine this is a bladed weapon, alright? So we can do actually the same techniques that we did with the uh, with stick. And we'll show you, no? Shane, I will show you. However, the difference here no? is that when before you were doing a, you were doing a hacking motion, this one is more of a slicing and uh, and slashing motion. Oh, Alright, so see, we'll do that. So again, we'll do the, the three strikes. No? Okay, we'll do one, two, two, three. This is just exactly the same as what we did. So it's the same motion, coach. One o'clock, seven o'clock. One, one, two, three. Yes, one, two, three. Okay, so 
now with more power. So one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. One more. One, two, three. Now just like uh, when we were using the stick, no? we can also go multi-level with these attacks. No? But this time, we have a more lethal weapon. No? We can slice. No? It's not just bludgeoning your opponent. This time, it's slicing and slashing. No? So I'll show you. Like, okay, you say, you go high. Offense, defense the man, all right. So if, get, if she hits me in the head, all right, it's the same. So it's both offense and defense. And again, when you chain them all together, no? again, you also have you, you can also, like you say, Karina, no? you can lull your opponent to sleep by your different techniques. No? So, yeah, so. Uh, so, with, so the first one, more of a hacking motion. Hacking motion, this is more of a slicing. Alright, slicing and slashing. But same technique in terms of strengths. Virtually the same. Okay. It's just this, this, and this. Of course, we have other techniques, but just to illustrate how simple it is. This, this, and this. You're virtually a master already. Okay. So now, it's not just the long blade. No? This can also be translated to the short blade or the knife. And these are the ones that uh, happen uh, or used during the Balikatan exercises. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, like I said, the Philippines is the knife capital of the world. No? People actually come here, they're special forces, they come here, the armed forces, they come here uh, to train in, in Cali or Arbis, no? Either that or they hire Filipino trainers to go to their country. No? So again, to show no? uh, the basic strikes again, we will apply with the knife. No? So again, we'll do the, the number one. Only this time, we have smaller arms. So one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Now, because uh, these are knives, no? of course, knives are better for stabbing than they are for slashing. No? So again, we, we add, uh, apart from the, uh, the slashes, we will add now the, uh, the stabbing. No? So, again, then our first stab, stab down the middle, and then stab in the side. And then to the other side. Okay, so again, one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Again, one, two, three. Now, okay, so offensive, offensive applications, exactly the same. Alright, so I can go high with it. The head, the neck, right, face. I can go the body, to the body, to the arms, to the hands. Basically, you combine all the attacks together. So again, we can come up with a more uh, uh, a very when you chain everything, it's all very confusing, but it all serves a purpose, no? So it looks like bara bara, no? It looks like mano mano, but actually everything is calculated, no? You can go fake high, go low, go low, fake high. Take the side. Also, okay, so that's the offense. Now defense the money. Again, it's exactly the same. Alright? So she has me here, okay? And the sword. Okay. Now, we showed you the knife and the sword. Now we can do it together, no? So why not together? Because we can do one. Why not together, alright? So, what are the applications of this? So on offense, alright? Again, I can go high. So of course it can be a combination of a long weapon and a short weapon. This is called the... The what? It's 
So again, when you, when you chain them all together, no? again you can come up with a cohesive attack. Right? That is meant to confuse your, your enemy. Right? Because you have your weapon. Okay, now, okay, now what we're gonna show is uh, how you apply these things no? in, uh, in very realistic situations. Right? So these are normal day-to-day -day situations that people may encounter. May encounter, yes. No? Uh, you know, we live in very different times now, no? and uh, it, it pays to be safe. Now, when, uh, when you talk about fighting in general, or especially uh, street fighting situations in particular, it's a sad truth that size matters. It's a myth that people say, as long as I have good technique, I can overcome size. Okay? If you have, like for example, me and Shay, I have easily 80 pounds on Shay. Alright? She can be like a kung fu master or whatnot, but more often than not, you know, maybe the odds will always be on me because of those 80 pounds. Alright? So what do you do? Okay? What you do is, you get a, uh, an equalizer. And what's an equalizer? You get a knife. Okay? We're just going to illustrate no, how a knife can protect somebody, Shay, who is much smaller than I am. Okay? Uh, now, we're not telling anybody, everybody to go around carrying knives. No? But this is like, for example, to illustrate like a home invasion scenario, for example. Somebody goes into your house, you're all alone, you pick up a kitchen knife, do you know how to use it? Right? That's the question, alright? So this is how you apply it. Okay? I'm going to wear some protection now because I didn't know about it. Shay, it's your chance now. Get it back. For example, grab Shay, right? Try to grab her. Okay, what she can do is she can slash my hand. Right? You can bet, you know, that that thing is gonna hurt like that. Might even cut your fingers off. Okay? So I, I grab her from here, she touch me. I grab her from here, she touch me. If I rush her, she's gonna hit me in the head and slice me in the face. Right? So me being afraid for my life you know, and not wanting to be uh, Okay, I'm afraid of that now. Okay, so now she may actually doesn't need to attack. All she has to do is do those three strikes to keep me at bay. Okay, those three strikes. So now, if I go try to go forward, she just does, does that, and I'm afraid. I go forward, I'm afraid because I don't want to be cut, and that that would be the, the difference between life and death. Normally, if you have assailants like this. If you, if you present some kind of defense that will delay them, no, it will it will drive them away. Okay. So another example is what if I had a knife, okay, and then I I can fight Shay, okay. So now Shay has a stick. Now again, we don't encourage people to go around uh, walking with sticks, but this could be anything. This could be an umbrella. This could be a rolled up newspaper. No, this could be a walking stick. But in any case. It's basically a weapon. And what does that weapon give here? It gives shape. It gives her reach and it also gives her power. So again, if I try to grab her, she'll hit my hand. If I try to stab her, she'll hit my hand. And again, if I try to rush her, she'll hit me in the face, she'll hit me in the eyes, and that's it. She can run away. You know? So that's, that's how you apply it. Way to get it back, Shay. Especially the strike on the face. That seemed like... Uh... Definitely a real strike. So coach, you know, we've seen a number already and this one you're bringing out a longer stick, okay? So this is the last one for today for our, for our demo. And uh, tell us about this stick. Alright, so maybe, uh, okay, our niece is known for the short stick. That's what people see. But actually, there's another uh, branch of it no, that, uh, that is not practiced by everyone. It's called the dos manos. No? It means a two-handed sword. It's a longer stick, okay, uh, roughly about 40, uh, 40 inches as opposed to the 28, 33 inches uh, for the short stick. And this is actually, well, essentially the, uh, the, uh, the answer of Philippine, Filipino martial arts to, uh, to uh, kendo no? or, uh, or the samurai arts. No? So actually, you employ the same techniques as you would with a short stick. No?
So still the same strikes. One to seven. Three strikes basically. With your yes, again, this is for offense and defense. Same. Both offense and defense as well. Now, again, you're asking what's how do you how do you apply this, no? Because people aren't going to be walking around with with swords uh, in their hands nor in their handbags. Uh, how this will, we can apply to you is we can actually use this with everyday items. For guess, for example, let's say again, you encounter a, a home invasion, no? You make you can make use of everyday materials, okay? Now most people, when they have a bat and they see an attacker, they just go blindly. The problem with that is you can get uh, in, uh, out of balance and actually end up hurting yourself. No? So if you if you uh, apply the techniques of the manos to this, okay, then you have a very deadly weapon. Anyway, that's that's how you apply it, <laughs> and uh, I guess that's it for our. Uh, Thank for you, Coach. Yes. Thank you for such a great demo. A round of applause for Mr. Dax Cordero and Ms. Ro Mrs. Rochelle Cordero. Dax, Dax is actually an international instructor from uh, Libre Knife Fighting System, and Carlos Hermanos Arniz, you are a training leader. So, for those of us that do want to start and find out more about Arniz and uh, the stuff that you guys do, where can where can we go? Uh, well, right now, you can find us on Facebook, no? uh, Carlos Hermanos Knife Concepts, no? uh, and also Carlos Hermanos uh, Dos Manos, and also uh, the Libre Fighting Philippines page. No? So guys, thank you so much. What a great demo. Thank you for telling us the history and the where where we are right now with Arnis. And just, just to make us proud, of, of something very Filipino, you know, a lot of people say that there there's not much to be proud of when it comes to the Philippines in martial arts, but obviously there is so much to be proud of. Yeah, actually, that's uh, uh, well, I want to take this opportunity now uh, uh, to, to ask you guys or to invite you guys to 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 really patronize our martial art. No, it doesn't even matter what style. You know, there's so many styles. There's there's Lustrisimo, uh, there's the Campo, there's Lameco, there's Kikiti. Any style would do, this is all pure Filipino. Any club would do, just join it and see how wonderful it is. No? And uh, thank you. Thank you, Dax and Shay. Thank you so much. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.